Lord, I pray that our eyes would be open, that we'd be able to see the purpose and the plan that we live on this planet. And Lord, that we would be able to move in, in, into the gifts of the Spirit and into the, uh, in the area of ministry that you've called us to. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, you know, that everybody's in the ministry. It's not just the pastors up in the front. Every one of us are in the ministry to go out there and help people and do great things for God. I just want to start this morning again by just prefixing what I'm going to say by this. And, and I believe it's something there that's bubbling up inside of me and it's something there that, that, that is more than just a phrase, it's more than just a saying. It's something there that's inside me that's starting to, to, to draw me and starting to pull me. And it's this, it says, What could happen if we could open our hearts to allow the power of God to invade our lives? If we, could, if we could get to that place, the Holy Spirit himself is the flame that wants to kindle love into passion and consume our fleshly, carnal life. Even so, the Holy Spirit is the divine fire that burns inside us and brings light, life, and power into this world. Jesus said that he was the light of the world. And I believe that we as God's kids, he wants to cause a light to shine in us, that we too can be those lights into this world. I believe that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the doorway to the supernatural power of God. I believe today that we're, there's some things that, that God is stirring again. Because a lot of times we've misunderstood the things that God has put so much emphasis on. I believe that the, one of the, and I'm saying I believe a lot of times, because I'm trying to let you know that this is where I'm at. You may not agree with me. You don't have to agree with everything I say. But I really believe that the church's biggest problem is not the devil, but the church's biggest problem is the church. Because when God begins to move, it's usually the church that has some sort of a, a doctrine or a tradition or something in their mind that, that causes them to reject what God's doing. In the early days when I first got saved, there was a, there was a, something was going on that God was starting to break open things. But the Pentecostal church that we started to attend, people would have their hands raised and they'd start to do this. And that was about the height and the length and the breadth and the depth of the manifestation of God. But you see, there is a genuine and then there's a non-genuine. It's like Rolex watches. You can buy them for $10 or you can pay 200000 for one. There's the genuine and there's the false. And as a young lad, I was 30-something years of age, 27 when I got saved, I watched these people and I wanted to be spiritual. I wanted to be, so I learned how to do that. I can still do it. <laughs> but there was no reality to it. When the things started to move and Trevor Chandler came over from New Zealand and brought a fresh wind and a fresh wave of God's presence, there was rejoicing and there was singing and there was dancing and and then the religious people, good people, started to speak against what God was doing because dancing in their mind was of the world. And I could understand where they were coming from, but can you understand what I'm saying also, that the church sometimes stands against what God is doing. And I want to say this again, that there is a genuine and there is a non-genuine. And when the 
genuine comes in, it affects people because we can sense it. Because you spiritually discern certain things. And when you see these things happening, you, you sort, of, sort of push it aside so you don't really want to get involved. You don't want to, you don't want to go into error. You don't want to do this. But there's God drawing you and God's presence is coming and wanting you to go deeper and things like that. The pastor in the church that we were going to at a particular time when Trevor was there started to criticize what was going on. And I met him through a circumstance and I went up to my minister and said, I met that man, he's a nice guy. You shouldn't be saying what you're saying about him. And he told me to leave the church, which I did and I went and joined Trevor's church. <laughs> But there was dancing and there was singing and there was joy and there was freedom and there was liberty and there was healing and there was deliverance and stuff like that. And then they went to the extreme with deliverance and, and the buckets came out. And I, I, my first, I, I remember in the church there, they, I became a, a deacon and, and uh, I was called out to, to help people as they were falling under the power and I was catching people. And I thought that was fantastic. And all of a sudden this guy started his manifest and, 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 uh, and out come the bucket and this guy said, come with me. And I went with him. But he didn't know my weak stomach. <laughs> and the both of us were in the bucket together. I don't know whether I was having a deliverance or what, but anyhow, I still got it, so I still <laughs> must have the devil. <laughs> But there was, there's things there that happened and there's still things today that, that are sort of people copy other people. And we, and there was a time there when you could understand what, what group of people, different people came into your church. They'd walk into your church. <laughs> you say, I know where you've come from. And then there's other things that were going on. Do you know what I mean? If you do that, you might be real too. But anyhow, don't worry about it. But there's again today that we live in a, in a day when I believe we need to really ex expect for God to pour out His Spirit again. For signs and wonders and miracles and, and, and great things to happen. But again, many even different types of churches, even some Pentecostal churches are walking away from it. Denominational churches, some say tongues have passed away. And they genuinely really believe that. The miracles have passed away. Signs and wonders are no more needed. I say no, no, no. As long as we live on planet Earth, these manifestations will remain. And we, you know... So for that to happen, we've got to make room for it to happen. We've got to start believing for it to happen. We've got to start to expect for people to get healed, for people to get delivered. And, and just keep on going, keep on believing, keep on believing. I believe as long as this earth remains, these, these manifestations will remain. Only when Jesus returns for His bride those things will cease because we've no need for miracles anymore. Amen? The book, book of Acts will continue to be, uh, to be lived out in the life of the church that believes. The book of Acts will continue to be lived out in a group of people wherever it is where they believe. Where they believe. Only, only the sacrifice of lambs, bulls and goats have ceased because Jesus fulfilled the requirement and became the sacrificial lamb and shed his blood for us all. Amen? He also removed the veil that separated God from man. So we can come boldly before the throne of grace today. We can enter into his presence. We can come before him. And that's why today with Irene we can believe God to continue to move and, and break those words of that doctor, break those words, that stronghold, those words. And in reality, those words are the things that can still hold her bound. We've got to break those words and, and those, she's got to have another word implanted into her thinking, I will live and not die. I will live and not die. So today... I want to encourage us all to, 
to start to get prepared and get ready to release the power of God in your life. I want to share a little bit about releasing the power of God. The purpose of Pentecost. The whole purpose. And sometimes we can get wrong concept, wrong thinking, wrong thoughts. But in Numbers 23 verse 19, it says this. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? In other words, what God is saying, I will do what I say. I will do everything that I say. And sometimes we've got to remind ourselves, even as people that have been saved for a long time, he said to you and me, and he just didn't say it to an elite group of people or this group of people, he said it to the whole church. He said, I will bless you. With blessings, I will bless you. Friends, I don't know about you, but we are blessed. Amen? We're blessed because God said we're blessed. But if you believe that you're cursed, if you believe that, well, you are. It's what you believe. There was a king and the children of Israel were coming down. They said they looked like grasshoppers on the plain. And he knew that, that these people were coming and that they could swarm and they could take over the land. And he called in the prophet and he, and he said, I want you to curse the people of God. I want you to bring a curse against them, lest they come and devour my land. And this man was offered a, a great reward, this prophet. And he even went up on the mountain and he watched over the children of Israel and he was going to do something there. But, but God kept speaking to him and he came back to the king and he said, the, the king said, you, you haven't cursed them. As a matter of fact, you've blessed them. He came again and, and he came back. He said, what's going on? He said, listen, he said, what God has blessed, I cannot reverse it. Friend, I want to tell you there's no devil in hell that can reverse what God says he's going to do. The only thing is he can play in your mind. And if you think you're cursed with so many Christians come to me and they say they're cursed. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, friends, that's in your mind. I want to tell you, you are blessed. Jesus became a curse. Cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree. He became a curse for us. Amen. He redeemed me from the curse. I've been delivered. I've been set free. Do you believe that today? It's what you say. He says you've been healed. Jesus says I'm healed. If Jesus said he, he's going to do it. He want, you know what God wants to do? He wants to heal your body so that you become a testimony of his power. A testimony of his power, what God can do. Heard this morning of testimonies of what God can do. But more than that also, he wants to empower you. He wants to give you power. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan so nothing can hurt you. No devil in hell, no power, no force, nothing. Whatever it is that comes against you will not prosper. He wants to watch over you. He wants to give his angels charge over you. He wants to love you with so much love that, that you cannot contain it. That his love would ooze out of you. He said in the book of Joel 2, and I'm just going to read some scriptures here to you. And it says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Give me a wave if you're flesh here this morning. God wants to pour his spirit out upon you. This is what he said. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and on your young men you shall see, shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my main servants, I'll pour out of my spirit. And he goes on, talks about showing wonders and goodness knows what else that God wants to do. And then he fulfilled that promise in the book of Acts. Where Peter, in a situation where people were, where tongues of fire were coming upon their heads, the mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. There were tongues of fires and people began to speak in other tongues and other languages and great things were being done in and through the name of Jesus. 
the mighty Holy Spirit power came down. And, and this, man, this Peter stood up and says, these men are not drunk as you suppose. But this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. He spoke about it because Jesus spoke through him, or the Holy Spirit, or God himself spoke through this man and established it. And God is not a man that he should lie. Has he not said it? Shall he not bring it to pass? And everything that God says, he's going to bring to pass. He's going to have a revival fire. He's going to move by his spirit. There is a man, they call him the father of Pentecost. His name was Charles, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this name, but Perham, P-U-R-H-A-M. He was a man mightily used, father of Pentecost. And he was a man there that was hungry for God. There was a thirst that I was talking about this morning. There was something on the inside of him that, that wanted God more than anything else. And he heard about people that were speaking in other tongues. He heard about an outpouring of the Spirit. So he goes and, and inquires. And he speaks and he says, I want this move. I want this fire of God. I, I want this, this fresh fire. I want this fresh anointing. The hunger was so great in him. There was a passion there. And he, and he went out there and he sought God. And he's in this little meeting one time with a bunch of people. And there were people there that were opposing the, the, this Pentecostal outpouring. There were people there that were saying, this is not of God. This is, these people are getting filled with devils. Well, I said before, many times when the Spirit of God moves, it's the church that rises against it. And the church, and so there's mixed feelings there, but God was still moving. The power of God was being made manifest. This man said that he stood there and he began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit came upon him. He said he was so disappointed for so long that he couldn't receive it and he just emptied himself. But then all of a sudden, he said something began to surge on the inside of him and out of him became a gusher and he began to speak with other tongues. And he said, first of all, he said he didn't understand it, but he found out later on that he was speaking Swedish. And they were speaking the Swedish language and then all of a sudden it broke into something else and other languages and, and other tongues started to be manifested in this man's life. And he said, well, after it all settled down and he was sitting there, he said a man came up to him and said to him, he said, I was an unbeliever. He said, I thought that these people were being filled with demons. He said, but when you began to speak in other tongues, he said, you began to speak in my native language and I heard you recite word for word Psalm 23. He said, I am now a believer. And that, that man got filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I, what I'm trying to say today is that God said He's going to do some things and He's going to do it whether the church stands against it or whether people stand against it or whether people say things that they shouldn't be saying, or whatever's going on, I ought to tell you, God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, and there's going to come a revival fire that's going to burn in the hearts of men and women, and men and women are going to rise up with power and authority. They're going to go back and they're going to cast out devils. They're going to raise the sick. They're going to raise the dead. They're going to lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. That's what I believe. Today, people from all walks of life, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Calathumpians, goodness knows what, are receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit just like the day of Pentecost. They are speaking in tongues, prophesying, praying for the sick, casting out demons and seeing miracles. The mighty gifts of the Spirit are being restored to the body of Christ again. Do you believe it today? The mighty power of God. I can remember in the early days when we, when we started Christian Outreach Center, we had a program on television called A New Way of Living. I was only young at the time and Nancy and I were running the children's church, but I was on staff. And I had the job of visiting people and doing a few things and I was asked to go up and visit this lady in hospital. It was at the Prince Charles Hospital. In those days, it wasn't like today's, it was all open and things like that. It was pretty, just big, big aisle, big, what do you call it, corridors with things going off each side. And 
I remember I walked in there and if you know me a little bit, you know I've got a little bit of a warped sense of humor. <laughs> I lean that way a fair bit. Okay. But I've just watched, you know, some of the, the, the movies and TV programs and things like that of, of uh, Dr. Kildare and all those old programs and, you know, all the nurses were, you you know what I mean? And as a young man, I, I sort of didn't want to, but I didn't notice that. And, and you know, the, the tea ladies coming in, they were so, so you know, they were, they were also. <laughs> smoke. And I go to this hospital, and I'm walking in there, and I see the tea lady. And I'm sure she's trying to get the tomato seed out from underneath a plate. <laughs> and because of this warped sense of humor that I have, I could not help, I just started to laugh. I, I am, I think, so different from the world to the reality. <laughs> Who remembers Dr. Kildare? Was it Dr. Kildare? Yeah. Anyhow, she looks at me and she says, who are you? <laughs> what do you want? And I think, I think she thought I'd escaped from the funny ward upstairs. <laughs> and she didn't really know what to do with me. And I said, uh, I said oh, I'm a pastor and I'm coming to visit. She said, you're not a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I took out my, my wallet and I had a, I don't know if you think I'd give it, but I had a business card in there. Christian Outreach Centre, new, where you'll find a new way of living. She looked, that's all she saw. She said, oh, you're from that, where they have that TV program. I said, yeah. She said, you pray for the sick. I said, yeah. She said, I'm sick. <laughs> she's, she's in hospital. She's sick. She's a, and where the nurse, the doctor's station was right there. And I'm here with this lady. I'm sick. So, <laughs> okay. So I walked over and I, I grabbed hold of her. <laughs> I thought for sure the doctor's going to come out here and arrest me for practicing medicine without a license. But you see, you've got to understand, we carry something. All this is going on and, you know, goodness knows what, but God's there. And I laid hands on her and I started to pray for her. And next thing she said, oh. I thought, don't you fall over. <laughs> don't you fall over. <laughs> don't you dare fall over. <laughs> and I'm hanging on to her. She, oh. oh, she said, Oh, that's lovely, beautiful. Oh, it feels so good. I said, oh, you feel good? Yeah, good. I was off. <laughs> and I went upstairs to see the, the, the lady that I was supposed to see, and she'd been discharged. Same as when I went to see her. You know, she'd been discharged. <laughs> she'd discharged herself. <laughs> but, but so, I thought, oh, here he goes. I'm going home. I'm starting to walk down this big corridor, and all of a sudden, I saw this head. And ducked away. I thought it looked like her. But anyhow, I walked past. As I walked past this area, this woman jumped out of this room, grabbed me by the arm, and dragged me into the, the, the linen press. <laughs> It's a pretty big linen press, but she's got two of her mates in there. <laughs> she said, these people need healing too. <laughs> she can't lift up her hand and pick, get the sheets off the top shelf. And, 
And here we are in this, I mean, in, when she grabbed me, I didn't know whether I yelled right or what. <laughs> But we started, I started praying for these people. And they were, yeah, they're throwing their arms around them. I don't know why I told you that story. <laughs> it just felt good. You see, we have an anointing that abides. And you'd be amazed what happens if you set the environment for people to be touched. And that's what it's all about, friends. It's not about me and you. It's all about Him. Why is God baptizing people in the Holy Spirit? I'm, I'm wanting this morning to, to re... Would it be regurgitate? Stir up again what's inside of you? so as that we won't back off. Why is God baptizing people in the Holy Spirit today? What is the purpose of this amazing experience? And change your life forever. What is the purpose of Pentecost? Does it make you feel good? Does it make you shout? Does it make you praise the Lord? Is it given just so that you can speak in tongues? No. But you most probably will do all of those things. <laughs> but we not, must not miss out on the real purpose of Pentecost. The Bible says in, books, in, in Acts 1.8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. I believe the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the entrance into the supernatural provision God has given to us, to the church, to every believer. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Men, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God starts coming upon your life, you, you cease to rely on your own ability and you begin to rely on God's ability. We can't heal anybody, but God can. That's why, Irene, I've got faith in what God can do, not what we can do. We'll do everything we can. We'll smother you in oil. <laughs> we'll pray. We'll spit. We'll do everything. But God's the one that can touch your life. And we've got to break those words off your life that that doctor said. We've got to break those words from your life, and we will. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses of my power. Jesus himself, after he was filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus came and he spoke these words and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. Started to proclaim that which Hazel was sharing. That he came for a purpose. The Holy Ghost was on him for a purpose. If Jesus needed the Holy Ghost on him for a purpose, so do we. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And God has anointed me to preach the gospel, to proclaim, to speak out, to, to, to be a voice, to lay hands on the sick. When Jesus spoke these words, prior to this, He had done no miracles. He hadn't started His miracles. This was news to every person that heard it. And there would have been those that would have said, who is he? And many did. Who? Who does he think he is? But he said these words, he said, today, this, what God prophesied would happen, is fulfilled in your hearing. Then he went out there and he started to minister and he found Peter's 
mother who was sick. And he laid hands on her. He spoke to her and raised her up. And she was totally healed. And the Bible goes on to say, and they brought all those that were oppressed, all those that needed healing. And he went out there and he healed them all. But I want to tell you today that God is moving by His Spirit. Today this Scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Tomorrow I'll go out and start doing it. And he started to go out there and he started to manifest the presence of God. It's beginning to rain, friends. Hear the voice of the Father. Hear the, hear the still small voice speaking to your life again. I believe that God wants to activate and motivate and challenge us afresh. I'm going to stop, close there because it's Mother's Day and I know a lot of people have got people that you've got to visit with and things like that. But friends, I want to remind you today and I want you to be encouraged and as you open up your hearts to the things of God and as you allow the Spirit of God to get around your life, let, let the King of glory come on in. Stir up the gifts again that's on the inside of you. Jazz was saying there, as they begin to worship, as they begin to praise, what, what was she saying? What, what is really happening? It's, 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 it's you're preparing a place. You're preparing an atmosphere that God can begin to move and God begin, begin to touch. These men go, and women go out west. They go out to the farmers. As Keith was saying, a, a dry and barren land where there's, in the natural it's dry, but in the spirit it's very dry. But you see, they carry something. You carry something. You carry the mantle, you carry the anointing. And people can get set free and healed and delivered. Why? Because you prepare a place. Prepare an atmosphere. Friend, this church here, this building, wherever we are, at the hub when we pray, when we meet, when we do things there, the presence of God is there. The mighty Holy Spirit power is there. We've come into this place today not just so that we can have another meeting. Not just so that we can take up tithes and offerings. Not just so that we can have communion or, or even hear a message. We're here because we want to come under the mantle, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. We come because we want God, we want to prepare a place where God can speak to us. What I'm saying are just words. What I'm saying is what I believe God has spoken to me. But I want to say this, that what I've spoken is like a loaf of bread. And God will break it. And He'll give some person this bit and some person this other bit. But what it is, is it's that we take it and we eat it and we partake of it. And we allow God to do something in our hearts. We just don't come to church and sit in church and sing a few lullabies or goodness knows what and then go out again. We're here to be challenged by the Spirit of God. We're here to be motivated. We're here to be lifted up. We're here to be, to, to, for God to speak to us. You're all looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate at the moment. But can you hear what I'm saying? Is that okay? Can I, is it an amen or? How many people are thirsty? Come on, how, how many truly are thirsty? How many, how many want more of God? How many honestly want more of God? Well, why don't you just lift up your hands and say, God, I want more of you. Well, oh, come on, why don't you ask God? God, would you pour out your spirit again? Would you touch me afresh? If you need healing in your body, reach out right now. Just reach out. A person with that condition in your left shoulder, Right in your neck there. It's below your neck. Let the Spirit of God touch you today. It's like a burning sensation. It's like a nerve. It's like, just as you move it, that's like a nerve just goes through there. You've got a lot of hands raised at the moment, but give me a wave if that's you. <laughs> Who's that person right now with that condition right in the shoulder? Right there. Nobody's waving. But you say, come on, maybe. Let's believe God for you. If you're in this place today and you need healing, God spoke to me, it might have been last night or this morning sometime. He said, Neil, anoint people with oil. Anoint them. I've got oil all over me at the moment. 
But if you need a miracle, if you need a touch from God, I want you to come out the front right now and just believe for God to touch you. I want to anoint you with oil. This is just one way that people get healed. People get healed in the presence of God. The Bible says that they anointed people with oil. And the prayer of faith healed the sick. If they had any sin, it was forgiven. It's a miracle working power of God. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. The anointing of God coming and touching people. The healing anointing, healing anointing, healing anointing, healing anointing, healing anointing, healing anointing. I'm going to start up this end up here. You need a touch from God. You might have already been out, you might have had oil all over you. But there's something inside you say, I just want, I just want God, God's touch on my life. On, uh, might have been Thursday night or something like that. Uh, Gordon rang me up. Margaret was in excruciating pain in her stomach. And they're in Melbourne or something. He rang me up, it was about 8.30. He said, I'm so sorry ringing you this. I said, I don't, don't worry about that, don't care. He said, but Margaret's got pain and, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I said, so, so he put me on to Margaret. She said, my stomach and so forth. And I said, get Gordon to put his hand on your stomach, where, where your stomach is. And uh, started to pray over the phone. How many, how far is Melbourne from here? Wherever they are. Adelaide, Adelaide. 2,000 Ks on the phone. Started to pray for her. Started to believe God. Started to talk. How you going, Margaret? She said, just, just wait for a second. I said, what? She said, I've got to get Gordon's hand off my stomach. He's pushing too hard. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she just started to laugh. She laughed for the next five minutes. I don't know if she's healed or not, but she's laughing anyhow. <laughs> See, that gentleman that I spoke about, he was conducting a meeting. And holy laughter had broken out, but a lot of people said that was of the devil. He was in this very reserved church. And uh, this person, uh, while he was talking, this guy stood up and said something. And then he went to sit down, but he missed the chair and fell on the floor. And of course, just, just like you laughed. And all of a sudden, within six, somebody else stood up and they missed the, uh, his, his son. The, the pastor's son stood up to say something and he went to sit down and miss the chair and end up on the floor. And he said within a few minutes, he said there were six or eight people on the floor rolling, laughing. He said within another five, three or four minutes, he said the whole church. See, God is doing something. Don't let our religious thinking stop us from entering in. Yeah, there is false. Yes, there is truth. That, let's discern it, amen? Let's discern what God's doing. Let's believe. But if you need a touch of God this morning, you need, I don't know, just a, a little drink. You want to get under the spout where the glory comes out. I could have walked around the shower room all day today and not get in the cubicle. I wouldn't have got wet. But I got in, praise God. <laughs> I got in, praise God. Amen. Come on, let's, let's, let's just, if you need a touch from God, you just need a uh, freshen up or whatever it is, just come. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Just come. Just come. Just come. I just want that touch, Jesus. I just want that touch of your anointing. I just want that touch of your mantle. I just want that touch. Oh, did it be by?